Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at this camera, the Canon EOS R, which is not out yet. I'm shooting this in the pretty awesome test bay at Canon in Burbank. Um, they have lights, they have focus charts, they have a whole bunch of um, cool monitors and things to look at. Uh, so I was able to get my hands on this camera and just wanted to like play around with it a little bit, um, put it through its paces, just get a sense of what the usability is for um, cinema, um, because that's what I'm most interested in. How does this function as a B or a C camera for the C200, C300 users out there? If you have a 5D Mark III or Mark IV, is this the camera you've been waiting to upgrade with? If you don't have a second camera and you're thinking about maybe getting a second C200 for alternate angles, um, will you be able to get away with the EOS R, which is maybe a quarter or a third of the price? Because this is a mirrorless camera, um, the dynamics are different. Going back, you have this area here, which is the um, customizable ring um, that you're able to set to control. This right now, it's controlling the aperture. Um, but you can also set it to control shutter speed or any number of things that the camera lets you customize. There's a big flip screen on the back, which is a huge step up from the um, 5D Mark II and Mark III that I have, because you can turn this around and if you're operating a second camera or using this as a camera on a tripod, you can bend the screen around and have to be able to check what the camera is shooting. I guess the main thing about this camera is that it's just the next evolution of Canon's Stills camera philosophy. You know, it's smaller, it's lighter, um, it's faster, it has uh, a more sophisticated processor in it. It fits one SD card instead of the SD and CF card that uh, my 5D Mark III does, which meant that this camera was never going to be able to record in 4K RAW just because um, the data transfer rate that SD can achieve just isn't the same as CFAS 2.0 cards. And they didn't want to put a CFAS 2.0 card in this camera because the media is more expensive and it's going to scare away a lot of the lower end um, photographic consumers that, that this camera is going to be the target audience of. It has a big, bright, beautiful touchscreen on the back. It functions a lot like the M50, which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, but it's much more responsive. It's brighter, it's clearer. Gives you access to all the things that you would need. When I put the camera into um, video mode, I'm able to use my um, dial to adjust the aperture, and then I'm able to tap on what I want to focus on. This camera also has dual pixel autofocus. It will track the subject's face. It'll give you um, a track variety of faces and allow you to tap or switch between which face you want in focus. It'll track an object as you move towards it or move beside it or move away from it. Being the next evolution of um, stills cameras with video component, um, it is just that much faster, that much quicker, um, that much more responsive. Uh, the focus for stills works um, by tracking where your eye is looking. You can turn that on so there's no more um, taking photos, resetting, resetting, resetting. You just look at the person's face or it tracks the face and it'll keep it tight. You can also um, turn on eye tracking if you're at really low apertures. This is an 85 1.2. So your depth of field is gonna be incredibly thin. This camera will actually track the subject's eyes, lock onto it so that your um, photograph is gonna be sharp, even at razor thin depths of field. So I'm shooting a video. I'm able to change aperture while it's shooting. I'm able to change ISO while it's shooting. I'm able to monitor the audio, which you can put through the audio port. Um, and I'm able to, um, turn the audio up and down by tapping the screen rather than adjusting something inside the camera settings. So that brings us to the video capabilities. Um, this camera shoots 4K, but it does so by cropping in on the sensor. This is due to, Canon says, um, the processing and data requirements from the 4K. It has a 1.7 crop. You can use the entire sensor to film um, video if you film in 1080p. You can then um, go down to 720p and shoot slow motion. So who is this camera for? Should you wait to get it? Should you sell your 5D Mark II or Mark III or Mark IV and jump onto the um, EOS R bandwagon? The EOS R is really worth checking out. $2,100. Um, it's cheaper than the 5D Mark IV um, and it has most of the same features. It has C-Log. Um, which comes free with this camera. You have to pay to get it upgraded on the 5D Mark IV. It has 4K video cropped like the 5D Mark IV. It's able to record 10-bit um, uh, 
422 video out to something like the Blackmagic Video Assist, which I have. And yet this camera can get an adapter to have the same EF lenses you have on the C2 or C300. Um, but the main lenses you're gonna probably use on this are the R lenses that were designed for this. So you're gonna need lenses that won't be interchangeable necessarily with your C200, C300. The main reason that I would like to get a hold of this camera is for using second angles during interviews or generally shooting second angles um, in film. You almost always want a wider angle um, for your second camera. Um, not always, but usually. And to move to a full frame that's gonna give you much more field of view is a huge um, trade up than trying to get another C200 um, and move it back or just go wider. This is gonna um, give way more bang for your buck. The big question mark over this is the crop factor. Um, but I really don't see that being a huge problem, at least for my workflow. I would much rather, especially on a wide angle, um, shoot 1080p because most of my clients still, you know, five or six years after 4K became a big thing, um, most projects are still delivered in 1080p. No one um, that I work with is demanding 4K or may ever demand 4K. It's a lot more data and a lot more work for a negligible uh, upgrade in resolution. Your crop factor 4K on the EOS R is still going to be wider um, than a non-cropped um, lens, same lens on the C200 because the sensor of this is so much bigger. It has this cool trick where when you open the front of the camera, the um, a little gate comes down over the sensor, sort of like the shutter. So you can't get dust or dirt in there. It's gonna be really helpful for outdoor and adventure photographers that work in snow or have to change a lens when there's a lot of dust around. I mean, this is such an obvious thing. I don't know why someone didn't come up with this years ago. It's also gonna be one of the best um, most fully featured stills cameras that Canon has ever released. So uh, for less than the 5D Mark IV, you're getting much more in a package. And uh, you know, as much as I love the click and the shutter um, release of my 5D Mark III, uh, this, I understand that mirrorless is the future. You're able to bring um, a lot more camera in a lot smaller footprint for a lot less price. You know, if you like shooting with Canon's color science, if you have Canon lenses um, like I do, then this really is the, the future. Thank you to Canon Burbank for letting me check out the camera. The only restriction that they stipulated was that I wasn't allowed to put an SD card in the camera and actually get footage. But as soon as they allow that, I'll come back here, um, shoot some test shots and some scenarios with this camera and um, get some test footage uh, for you guys to check out. That is my look at the Canon EOS R. Thanks very much for watching guys. Leave your questions in the comments and I will see you next time. Thank you.